Welcome back to Rock the JVM, folks. This is Daniel, and what you're watching is part two of the SBT tutorial where I'm going to show you the foundational SBT skills and features that every Scala developer needs to know, in my opinion. In the previous video, I showed you the absolute basics of SBT, including how to spin it up, how to set up an initial project, how to set up some initial variables, how to compile and run sources and tests, and how to add additional libraries for uh, regular uh, project and for tests respectively. So here I am in my little project which I created from scratch in the previous video and here I have a build.sbt, a source directory which contains a uh, uh, source main Scala, com, rock the JVM and a main application with a main method and uh, the fancy library and a source test Scala with the same package comrock the JVM with a simple test file which has a very simple test the uh, contents of which are not that important my goal is to show you the foundational SBT features and here under build.sbt I uh, have uh, just some global variables like the Scala version, the name and the organization. I showed you how to add external library dependencies and how to make SBT download those automatically. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you some more complicated features of build SBT, including how to set up multi-module projects and how to run them separately. So to that end, I'm going to create a new multi-module project. Let's call this, dear, let's call this multi-module project. And I'm going to change directory into this one. And I'm going to vim build SBT and I'm going to start a new build SBT file. And I'm going to add my original variables like the Scala version, the version, the name and organization, but I'm going to scope them under a constant called this build. So I'm going to say this build slash Scala version is, and I'm going to use this uh, colon equals uh, assigner, so it's 2.13.8 at the moment of this recording. This build slash version is at version, say, 1.0. This build slash name is, let's call this multi-module. So this is the name of the entire project. And this build slash, let's call this organization, so organization is uh, com rock the JVM. Now, this build is a global scope, so all these settings apply to the entire project, including all the modules that I'm going to specify. And because the build SBT allows plain Scala syntax, I'm going to create a val. So I'm going to say uh, module uh, one. I'm actually going to give this name, let's call this core, as and I'm going to use in parentheses, I'm going to say project in file, and in parentheses, I'm going to use core as a string. So this expression, project in file core, obviously this is regular Scala, the in is a method, project is a uh, globally available data structure, and file core, this is a path to the uh, core subdirectory within this project. So when I execute the SBT command, SBT will create this directory for me. And uh, I'm going to make this lazy. It's usually good practice to make them lazy because SBT will only need to load them once when needed. So I'm going to have lazy val. I'm going to create a new module. I'm going to call this, let's see, server or something like that. So project in file, I'm going to call this server. And I'm going to have a lazy uh, val. This is the big project. So I'm going to have root as project uh, in file and I'm going to have dot, which is the root directory. And then I'm going to aggregate. So I'm going to say aggregate. And I'm going to have my core and server submodules inside. Okay. Good. Now, at this point, I'm going to uh, write this file. And I'm going to hit SBT. And when I hit SBT, you'll see that SBT will create the appropriate directories. So let's give it a couple of seconds. And uh, apparently I've had some syntax error. So uh, let me vim again. So we have project in file core, project in file server, and have project in file dot. And I forgot a parenthesis here. And uh, this is typical me when I don't have autocomplete or somebody to yell at me. Then uh, let me run SBT again. This should take a couple of seconds for SBT to spin up the necessary stuff. Okay. Um, cool. Now, if I, uh, okay, let me exit the SBT 
uh, console. And notice that we have a project and a target directory automatically created by SBT for any SBT project. But notice that we now also have core and server subdirectories which will serve as independent modules. And inside the core and server, we can add additional build.sbt files to specify some uh, module-specific settings for both. I'm going to show you. So for instance, let me uh, make the server directory, the server module, depend on core, assuming that this is where you store your uh, data definitions and server is a dedicated module that relies on this one. Let me uh, vim build this bt again, and I'm going to make server depend on core by saying depends on, and I'm going to use the core variable as a dependency. All right. Now, in this build.sbt file, you can specify the library definitions or uh, module-specific settings here in this file. So I can say lazyval core, let's say, dot uh, settings. And here under settings, you can specify the, um, for example, library dependencies for this project. Or you can specify the library dependencies in its own build.sbt, and I'm going to show you how. So let me uh, remove this little thing, save build sbt, go to core, and I'm going to have another build sbt, and I'm going to say, for instance, library dependencies plus equals, and I'm going to have, let's say, uh, com type safe, I'm going to have type safe config, so I'm going to say uh, percent percent, and I'm going to use config, and then I'm going to say percent uh, 4.2, uh, 142, 142, checking my notes here, I think I have this Okay. All right. Now, let me get back to the root. So after I've added the build SBT file for the core project itself, I can run the SBT uh, command yet again, which will spin up the necessary uh, scaffolding. Okay. So the SBT uh, ran correctly for our little project. And for example, if we're interested in the core uh, submodule that we've created, we can do project project, and I'm going to use core here to switch to the core module here under the uh, big directory. So all the commands here will only apply to the core project or the core submodule in my big project. So if I hit compile or this thing with tilde compile, which will uh, keep in uh, a watcher for files only within this project, it will automatically compile those as well. All the commands are specific to this uh, submodule. Now, some best practices. I'm going to uh, kill this. I'm going to cd core, and I'm going to remove build sbt because it's usually good practice, especially for uh, small to medium-sized projects, to store everything in build.sbt, that is, in only one build sbt, which is the common one for the entire project. So build.sbt should contain every definition in the entire project, regardless of how many modules you have. Now, if build sbt grows too big, you might want to store those in regular skull files here under the project directory. So let me give an example. So I'm going to switch to this multi-module project in one of my code editors, and I'm going to switch to project, and I'm going to vim a, a Scala file, a plain Scala file, it's called as constants dot Scala. And here in this constant dot Scala, I'm going to create an object, I'm going to call this constants. And here under constants, I'm going to create a simple val, let's call this root package, which is, let's say, com dot type safe, which is a common prefix for, let's say, a bunch of Aqua libraries that you might want to add. Now, this thing is a a uh, pretty a contrived example because this constant can also be included in build.sbt directly, but I'm going to show you how this uh, root package constant can be used inside build.sbt. So I'm going to save this, so constant la scala. Then I'm going to move to build.sbt, and I'm going to have, let's say, the core. I'm going to add some library dependencies here in this core, and I'm going to say settings. So the settings here apply to just this module, and I'm going to say library dependencies. And I'm going to say plus equals, and then I'm going to say constants dot, and I think it's called root package. So constants dot root package. Then I'm going to say percent percent, and then I'm going to use config, let's say, and then the version, checking notes, it's 142. Okay. Now, 
this thing, the constants object that I've added under the project directly, uh, is going to be directly available here under build.sbt. So if I hit SBT, hopefully that will simply work uh, to uh, define the library dependencies in the build.sbt. All right, so let's see. It takes a little while. I don't know why it's taking so long. So compilation completed in seven seconds. And notice that this build uh, compiled successfully. So uh, in other words, the com type save string was correctly included. So this is a way that you can eliminate complexity in your uh, build definition by specifying Scala variables and pretty much arbitrary Scala code, but you should use uh, pure values here, such as strings, here under the project directory and uh, keep them separate from build.sbt and add them automatically in build.sbt because every Scala file in definition here under project will be immediately available under build.sbt. Cool. Now, speaking of the project directory, I'm going to show you how you can add plugins under project. So I'm going to navigate back to project and I'm going to add a file called plugins.sbt. So plugins.sbt. Now, SBT is not necessarily a simple build tool, but it's very, very powerful and uh, very pluginizable. So I'm going to write a command called add SBT plugin. And you can add a bunch of plugins. For example, if you want to set up your project for Scala.js, you would add a particular SBT plugin, which will allow you to compile Scala to JavaScript. For example, uh, there are SBT plugins for dockerizing an application and so on and so forth. I'm going to use a plugin called SBT assembly from com.e design with um, the digits. Uh, eDesign is Eugenio Coda, uh, the main uh, maintainer of SBT, and the plugin is called, so I'm going to use the percent sign, it's called SBT-assembly. Assembly. And uh, of course, I'm going to spell it properly because otherwise SBT will fail, and obviously you're going to have to add a uh, some sort of version to this plugin, much like you do on library dependencies. And this is pretty much it. Plugins.sbt is usually a short file with just uh, statements like that. And if you want to enable the assembly plugin by going back to build.sbt, so I'm going to say uh, build SBT. And let's say that, for instance, I want this core module to be uh, build first, and the main class of the core module is going to be some sort of uh, main application. Let's call this. Uh, so I'm going to have to say assembly which is a scope enabled by the plugin. So assembly slash in the same style I was, as we did this build earlier. So assembly slash, and I'm going to have main class. And I'm going to use the assignment operator. And this is going to be an option. So I'm going to say sum with a string with a fully qualified class name of a main application. Then I'm going to add a comma here because every expression here is an argument to the settings function. So I need to make sure that the comma is here. So sum, I'm going to have, let's call this com rock the JVM dot, let's say core uh, app or something like that. And I'm going to have a comma, then I'm going to write this file. Okay, now I need to create that application. So I'm going to make dir um, dash p. So I'm going to have core source main Scala com rock the JVM, and this is an autocomplete from my uh, uh, from my console. I'm, I term here because I uh, practiced this before. So I'm going to have let's call this core app dot Scala, and uh, I'm going to vim actually not going to use that as a directory. I'm going to call this um, uh, remove. So I'm going to remove this um, dash R. And I'm going to remove this because I accidentally make it a, uh, made the folder. So I'm going to have a vim. Um, and I'm going to use this exact path. So core source main Scala com rock the JVM core app dot Scala. Right now it's an empty file. Cool. So I'm going to have a package. Uh, I'm going to have com rock the JVM. Then I'm going to have an object core app. And I'm going to have a, a main method with args as an array of string. And this returns unit. And then let's say I'm going to print line uh, simple module application. And I'm going to, first of all, write proper Scala. So def main. 
let me write this. So I have a core application, and because I'm in the multi-module project, I need to hit SBT. And then I need to spin up this, uh, the application, or rather the assembly plugin. So I'm gonna have project core. So I need to switch to the module which had the assembly plugin installed there. And then I need to hit the assembly command. So assembly with two S's, so assembly. And uh, this should download, should try at least, should try to download the library definition from build.spt, but it seems that type level config at 142 is not available. For some reason, I don't know what's happening here. I'm going to use org type level, and I'm going to use cats effect. So let's write this one, exit, build SBT, and here on, instead of config, I'm going to use cats effect. I know for sure that this is gonna work. So cats effect, I'm going to use instead of 142, I'm gonna use 331 or 330. Uh, then I'm going to uh, write this, run SBT again, and I'm going to switch back to my project, which is core. I'm going to say project core. Then I'm going to hit assembly, which will attempt to download the uh, library definition again. And uh, this time it's going to work. Okay, so we have a success. Now, what did this assembly command do? Well, it built a jar for the core module. So if I exit the SBT console and I go to uh, core and then target, notice that we have two folders here. Uh, originally, they weren't there. So if I do... If I go to SCA 213, notice that we have core assembly 1.0.jar. So now we've built a binary out of this module. All right, now let me clear my little screen and actually let me bring this in view. So if you have core assembly 1.0.jar, this is a regular Java application. So I can say java-jar with core assembly 1.0.jar. And this will simply run the main application associated to this jar, which is going to simply print out the simple module application. So notice that this is a standalone Java application or Scala application compiled as a jar, and you can run this standalone. So this was an example of how you can use an SBT plugin to do various things. We demonstrated how to assemble a project or a module as a standalone jar. There are a variety of SBT plugins, for example, to ship your application to CICD, to assemble that as a Docker, to assemble that as a jar, and so on and so forth. There are a lot of SBT plugins out there. This was just a demonstration. Now, this plugin was local in the sense that we had uh, it installed in plugins.sbt. So the plugin is accessible under uh, project and plugins.sbt. So we had this SBT assembly as we discussed, but you can also have plugins defined globally. Globally means that no matter where your uh, SBT project is, or no matter how many SBT projects you have on your computer, all of those plugins will be loaded automatically by SBT when you start the SBT console. So for example, I can ship this plugins.sbt to a particular file location which starts at the home directory. So I'm going to go home and um, I have a directory here which is installed automatically with the installation of SBT, which is .sbt, this is a hidden directory. So under .sbt, then you have a bunch of directories here, boot preloaded, this is uh, not something that we should touch. We have different versions of SBT that you might have installed, I'm pretty sure you have a 1.0 there, so I'm gonna go there. And under 1.0, I have a bunch of directories inside, and one is called plugins. So I'm going to uh, go back and uh, cd at dot sbt 1.0 plugins. And here under plugins, I can ship this plugins.sbt, and that will mean that the assembly plugin will be loaded for all SBT projects for which I'm going to start the SBT console. All right, awesome. So at this point, I can kill the rest of my terminals with Scala code and keep the main terminal with SBT, so I'm going to switch back to my multi-module project, and this is the structure that we currently have. Now, all right, folks, so that concludes part two of the SBT tutorial, where we have some intermediate features that you might need for your Scala project. I hope you liked this video and found it valuable. If you did, click the like button for me and subscribe to the Rock the GVM channel for more videos like this. Check me out on Twitter and LinkedIn. I post fresh updates 
on upcoming material. And obviously, check out the Rock the GVM website. I have literally hundreds of hours of everything in the Scala ecosystem. So I'm waiting for you there. And until next time, I'm Daniel, signing off. <laughs>